open your ears, and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm the Rowan Fenton. Wouldn't you know it, Chi-Chi got strep again. What? Again. Again. Fuck! Maybe she's defective. I don't know. She has all these sore throats that turn out to be nothing, and all these fucking minute clinic trips that end with almost violence to get her to hold still for a fucking throat culture. And she knows how simple it is, and she never gets any fucking more used to it. No, I, I, I don't really... Well, I guess I'm... I'm used to it, so I can't sit here and say i the same boat. Nope, sorry. It's a Q-tip that they tickle your tonsils with. Nobody's putting a blindfold on you and saying, open your mouth and shut your eyes and you will get a big surprise. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. I'll work the shaft, swallow the gravy. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when she has yet another one of these sore throats and that morning, I'm like, get my pen light. Let me look in your mouth. Because I'm observing it, I always use the wait and see approach. Maybe she's allergic to something. Well, yeah, they say she has allergies. They couldn't say what. Maybe they, they don't do the pollen. scratch test? I don't know. Some pollen shit, maybe. I don't know. So Spr- you're the doctor. Do a, a, you, you can have them do a, an allergy test, and they just take uh, samples of things, and they set to, give a little scratch on your skin. And it's like fucking 16 different things at once and they just check for bumps and measure and all that Mm -hmm. so they know what you're allergic to they did it with drama and she's allergic to cats four different kinds of trees she has a slight pollen allergy you have a cat yeah this was the day before we got the cat that we found out she had an allergy to cat talk about uh, irony right well she can suffer she's living with it so far (laughs) she's got five other people that are enjoying it you know you know she's been holding the cat her eyes are kind of red and her nose is a little stuffy she look all fucking cheached out like Towley from South Park? No, not not quite that bad. I love Pitt and you, Giddy. I have no idea what's going on right now. <laughs> Very good impression. Uh, thank you. So I, I look in her mouth, and her left tonsil's always big. She's just got a big fucking left tonsil. It's kind of like how <laughs> women have one breast bigger than the other. She's got one tonsil that's always enlarged. And I look, and I'm like, okay, well, that's a hunk of cottage cheese. We should probably go to the Minute Clinic. So you see something white in the back of the throat? Oh, I saw cream. There was a bunch of shit on there. Yeah, it was bad, dude. And uh, I took her, and we get to the Minute Clinic, and she says, I hope it's the lady, because, you know, we're on the first name basis with the one woman that works there. With how often you're there? Yeah, you should probably get frequent flyer miles. I have said we should probably have a punch card at this point, but it's... You know, nine times out of ten, it's her. The other one time, it's been either this black chick or this Asian guy. I did the episode about the Asian guy. with the, Just put her arms above her head and just uh, hold her down. That guy. Yeah, that's going to work. Well, now, the chick said that was a pretty good method that they use with difficult children, but obviously this is Chi-Chi, and she's an exception to every rule. And the last time she got a throat culture from this broad, she did fucking fantastic. It was over in three seconds. I thought we had turned a corner. So she was all excited that it was the gal and uh and then it comes down to time to do it and let me just say that it took probably 35 minutes to get it done for fuck's sake just for the throat culture jesus christ the whole appointment should have been 15 to 20 minutes and not even that i would have stopped out of there says fine you can fucking be sick then i don't care well no because that doesn't treat it she needs the antibiotics and they can't prescribe (laughs) it you know what sorry Someone out there might be thinking this is child abuse, but if you're going to act like that when I'm trying to make you better, fuck you. I had half a mind to slap her across the face. I was going to do that when... And then grab Cuba her arms and hold shot. her head so they could quick jam the Q-tip in there. I was going to do that like, Don't Cuba. judge me. He had to get a booster shot, and he just freaked out and starts yelling out, Help me! Help me! Which one is that? Pubert. Pussy. <laughs> he's better now, I think. It's been a while since he's had a shot, but... I would have flat out said, I will fucking leave you here if you don't stop acting like such a vagina. He passed out. Yeah, I know. Pussy. <laughs> so anyways, the rapid test uh, came up positive. Big fucking shock. And I told you it took an extensive amount of time. I would like to regale you with 
a text conversation between the beast and I while I was there. She keeps giving sick when she's at your house. There's something wrong with your house. No, there's something wrong with the beast's house. Yeah, that's what I mean. She you, takes that her was to, you talking to her. She had just taken her to some fucking big public place. It's either indoor playgrounds oh, or yeah, a yeah. museum. There's a culture. Or the fucking... Uh, did you know they have a, an aquarium at the Rosedale Mall? They do? Exactly. I didn't know that. I thought they only had sea life at MOA. I don't... Go to Rosedale Mall. I'm not 12. Well, whatever. Anyway, they she took him to an aquarium there. So she's like, I don't understand how <laughs> she got sick. Nobody around her has been sick. And here's the conversation. So, uh, for the record, we arrive at the Minute Clinic around 2.09 and wait approximately 20 minutes to be seen. Which is a waste of your time. No, there was only one person in front of us. It was an old lady. So Minute here, Clinic. <laughs> you're there for an hour. You can get an appointment same day. Walk in. Much different than schedule. Yeah, at the minute clinic. You can pre-schedule online sometimes too. Hmm. But let's get to the funny part. So this is well, we're waiting a half an hour, you know, for the throat culture. So let me see. So we went in at 2.30. This is 27 minutes later, 2.57 p.m. I send a message to the beast. Boy, I love these trips to get throat cultures that turn into fucking wrestling matches. She has some serious issues with the doctor and I am beyond over it. A minute later. The Beast. It's your approach. She doesn't pull that shit with me. She's scared of you, I think. At the doctor, at least. I'm betting it's a virus, which is why I haven't taken her in. Low-grade fever doesn't warrant a doctor trip. Two minutes later, I replied with two words. Throat cheese. A minute later. The Beast. What is the verdict? Okay, so 3.04 p.m., a few minutes later. 30 minutes, no throat culture yet. And then I immediately, a minute later, said, and thank fuck no one else is here. Nine minutes later, finally done. Positive. And at this point, we headed to Walgreens to get meds. 3.21 p.m. The Beast. Where the fuck would she have gotten strep? Anywhere? Right. Six minutes later, 3.27. Sorry to point out the obvious. (laughs) What? Me. (laughs) The carnival, probably. Hundreds of kids touching their mouths and everything thereafter. Then Dingus McGee, he does the reverse. Not hard to figure out. Because she took him to the 4th of July carnival. Fucking germ city. So she replies with, Or Target, or leftover strep from little E. I don't know, is she getting meds? And I fucking lost my mind at that point. If you could scream into a phone, and it would just translate to all caps... And then send the message and then also shock the person. That's what it would have taken to satisfy me. Because I lost my shit and went uh, leftover strep from little E from fucking Memorial Day, which was 45 days ago almost. Dumbass. (laughs) (laughs) She's dumb. She's an ass. Yeah. She's a dumbass. I just, I peppered that. I'm reading it as I was saying it in my head. So, uh, immediately after that, I sent another text. I'll never understand how your mind defaults to offense from perceived blame when I mentioned the best statistical option just because you took her to said place. The Beast. I was just saying, I don't know, kids get sick. I'm not going to stop taking them places. If you would have talked to me when I talked to her, I was going to offer to bring her there for you. Here's me replying. Once again, not blaming you, but it wouldn't kill you to carry Purell. Her reply, I do. And then, you know, a few minutes go by, and she says, How many times has she gotten strep? Is it enough to get her tonsils out? This is ridiculous. Even when she doesn't have strep, her tonsils are swollen. I replied, Talk to That's our pediatrician. Consult her. You have all this time on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when they're not fucking with me and all the first part of Thursdays when school's out, you know, summer vacation, to bring them to the doctor and have them look at her fucking tonsils and assess the number of times that she has had strep. Because every time that I take her in and I register on the little fucking computer outside of the office at the Minute Clinic at CVS, it asks me if I want a summary of today's visit sent to her regular pediatrician, and I check yes, goddammit. So not only was it bad enough that the kid had strep on my days again, and I had to sit there and fucking argue and fight with her. Like, I seriously laid some college-level English ass-chewing on her. Like, 
the lady working there kept giggling and trying to hide it because I was just, just matter of factly like, well, but here's the problem is that we've been here for 32 minutes and this takes literally two seconds. And I have told you repeatedly, open your mouth, close your eyes, tickle, tickle, done. I'm like, watch me do it. Tickle, tickle, maybe a little bit of gag. No, that sounds dirty. <laughs> Close your eyes, tickle, tickle, done. Yeah, that doesn't sound dirty at all. Yeah. So I just, I'm so fucking sick to death with this shit, and I'm just waiting for her to be told she needs her tonsils out at this point. She hasn't had strep like seven times in a year or whatever, I've heard is the the base figure. Like seven times in a calendar year, they'll go, holy shit. At this point, I'm sick of going to the Minute Clinic, and I feel like the soldiers that were forced to march... The Bataan Death March, are you familiar with it? I have a book on it, yes. Yes. Okay, so how many miles did they march those motherfuckers? Holy shit. I uh, can't remember off the top of my head. I thought it was around 60. It was a long-ass way, and fucking half the soldiers died along the way. I just remember that people were so weak from starvation that they were falling over, and that the Japanese soldiers were dickholes, like, oh, well, we're going to practice with our katana blades and see if we can take your head off in yep. one slice. That's, That's the shit that our, our soldiers faced. Uh, hey, it was a long time I read it. We all know they ma- they marched a long fucking ways with very little food, and many of them died. Little food? I don't think they got any food. Some of those guys complained less about the conditions of their little jaunt from point A to point B than my six-year-old does getting a Q-tip in her mouth. It's uh, it's ridiculous is what it is. Yeah, you know, it's like sometimes a turtle has issues with just simple tasks. You know, like she wanted to go on the inner tube around the boat the other day. I know this doesn't really compare to your story, but it's it's the best I got at this point. Okay. She she wanted to go on the inner tube, but we're out in the lake, and she was afraid to just step and plop into the inner tube. You know, she's wearing a life jacket. The boat's not moving. The engine's off. She, But she's so worried, so scared that something bad's going to happen that we spent literally almost 10 minutes trying to get her into the tube. Because she can't see the bottom? The tube? No, you can see the tube's right there. It's... The bottom of the body of water. Uh, you No, know, you couldn't see the bottom, even though the depth finder said it was only six feet deep. What I'm saying is maybe that's part of it for her, is she cannot see the bottom. She, well, probably, but as we kept telling her, you have a life jacket on. Mom and I are right here. Nothing bad could possibly happen. Hmm. So, eventually we did get her in the tube, and I got her up to a whopping four miles an hour on the tube. It, the tube was making a bigger weight than the boat. Was she crying the whole time? No, she was having a blast. Oh. Uh, I got up to five miles an hour last night. Can she swim? Eh, decently. She can dog paddle pretty well, but she hasn't so what the she fuck? spent too much time trying to figure out how to swim. I got to work order on it. I wow. Know. I would have told her to check something on the side of the boat and then just fucking shouldered her into the drink. <laughs> I would have goddamn just given her a hip check or something. Like, oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. Your life preserver is preserving your life. Stop well, your fucking crying and get in the tube. Even when the boat was beached yesterday, and you could see the bottom clearly, it was only about 18 inches deep, if that. She wouldn't just jump over the edge of the boat into the 18 inches of water. She had to go to the back of the boat, drop the ladder down, and climb down the ladder. This is the stuff that, that about her that I just don't get. It's like, even when I, I mean, she's a lot like me in some ways. That is not me. Because by the time I was nine, I was a fish. I I would jump in the water a thousand times. You remember we used to swim? Yeah. You know? So, I, I, I just don't get it. Yeah, sometimes I jumped in pools and needed saving on a couple occasions because I couldn't swim for shit. And I was like, uh-oh, uh-oh, can't touch bottom. Oh, bleep, bleep, bleep. and then I'm jumping up and down, you know, what kids do when they're trying to fucking... Uh... Where are you? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was at my cousin's pool at her oh, okay. when I was like okay. seven or eight. Not up at the lake. I thought you were talking about up at the lake. It's like, I never noticed you almost drowning. No, no, no. This was elsewhere. Yeah, it's these fucking ridiculous, illogical fears that these kids have. And with mine, it's one of the worst because you have to go to the doctor for so many things. Like, it's... You don't have to. People choose to. Well... For peace of mind. There's a different things that you would go for. Well, if, if my kid... like, Well, when my kids are running just a fever... And I give them, like, uh, an Advil or an ibuprofen or something, and the fever goes down. Okay, well, you know, it's it's viral, and it's being controlled, so no need to go to the doctor. Oh, you, that's you what the beast thought. She's like, well, 
just give her some Tylenol, Mike. Should I give her some Tylenol or should I go maybe look at that big fucking cottage cheesy mass on her left well, tonsil see, in that there? situation, you, you have complaints of sore throat, you know. I, honestly, our kids give us complaints of sore throats relatively often. And we used to always take them to the doctor right away and have them looked at. And, like, is one out of ten there might be a st- case of strep. So it's like now it's we really wait for more symptoms to show up before we start going, is it really strep? You know, like if the kid is not acting like themselves at all, constantly tired, in bed, you know, not moving, can't talk very well. Okay, yeah, you're definitely come. You got to have something. But otherwise, you know, it takes a fucking hurricane for me to take the kids to the doctor. Well, I just love the point that I've told them literally probably a hundred times each. Stop fucking touching stuff when we're out in public and then chewing on your nails or picking your nose. You're always putting your fingers in your fucking mouth. Knock it the fuck off! <laughs> and they still, they'll be sitting there chewing their nails. And I'm like, what are you doing with your nails right now? Where are, where's your finger? In my mouth. Oh. Go wash your fucking hands. Hey, were we just at Target? Wash your fucking hands. I'm actually shocked at how much my kids are starting to wash their hands. Well, as long as they're not doing it like six times in a row and flicking light switches on and off. No, no. It's like, like when I take Bubba to appointments and stuff like that and he's like, he's a bathroom, he actually goes and washes his hands when he's done. Good. And the one time I decided not to, he's like, you didn't wash your hands. I'm like, no, I didn't get pee on him. <laughs> like, I washed my dick this morning. That's fine. I have that same yeah. <laughs> argument with the wife every time I don't wash my hands after I go to the bathroom. She doesn't fucking... My mom, you don't wash your hands after you go to the bathroom? I will when I'm at work. <laughs> well, see, unlike you, Linda, when I am relieving myself, I don't have to partially dig inside of a fucking bologna sandwich to kind of get rid of all the extra fluid. Oh, I, I just kind of give it a shake, and since I wash my dick multiple times a day on average, I'm not too worried about a few germs from holding the shaft while I briefly empty my bladder. You, on the other hand, make the room smell like poop every time you pee. Adoken! You didn't wash your hands. Yeah. And you didn't apparently uh, get in between the folds of your fucking cunt because it smells like a fart inside of a tuna fish sandwich on your couch cushion. Shut the fuck up. You know, speaking of your mother, it's actually funny. Go on. My mom told me that that your mother thinks I'm mad at her or I've taken your side completely or something. Because, I mean, despite, you know, I've always gotten along with your mom. You know, just respect, politeness, because I'm up there. And Except for that time that you to told drama. her that your dad was right, and she's too opinionated, and then she banned you from coming over for a while. Uh, something about asking if your mother had any kids that ever lived besides you and your sister. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember exactly what that was, but I know my dad was just pissed at me after that. Anyway, so because the reason why she thinks I am you know, shunned her and everything like that is because when we were at my brother's wedding, your mom was there, and your dad were there, and... Uh, they told everybody the wedding's going to start at 1, but they were actually planning on starting at 2. Uh-huh. But they told everybody 1 o'clock so that people would show up on time. Mm. Well, well it played. ended up being delayed because the photographer was late, and then another person that they were waiting for was late. So the wedding didn't start until 3, and your you mom... You had one job! Your mom was sitting there bitching the whole time the, for she, two hours. She lives to bitch. Her. Yeah. She's like, it's so hot today. I don't know why they're gonna. Why, I don't know why it's not starting yet. This is just absolutely straight. We, we're gonna have to leave here pretty soon. Not, we're not gonna be able to eat anything because you know we just have stuff we we're supposed to be doing. I mean, it's, it's just ridiculous. And I was like, I told my mom, I like, I didn't talk to her because she was doing nothing but bitching, and I had nothing to say to her at that point. Otherwise, if she wouldn't been like that, I would have said hi. Thank Christ, I was not there. I would not have hesitated to make a public spectacle at your brother's wedding and say, Linda. It's summer. Dress for the weather. Lose a little fucking weight. You could probably stand to skip a meal, and I'm pretty sure there's other food available in different locations than here that you have ready access to, so stop acting like you just got out of Auschwitz. (laughs) Shut the fuck up, and it'll start when it starts. If you can't handle the heat, go sit in the goddamn car with the AC. You got the keys? Is there fuel in the tank? Is the fucking battery charged? Nobody's changing to this fucking chair. Shut the fuck up. You're making everybody around you miserable with your constant goddamn letting off of the hot air. Stop it. You stop it. And then I end it by scolding her like a dog. Flicker in the nose. Like she's, you know, chewing on her own ass. That's the kind of shit that I... 
My mom needs that. That you grew up with. <laughs> I've, I've gotten to the point where I don't care about her fucking feelings or looking like a jerk. And anybody that says, hey, don't talk to her like that, and I'll say, motherfucker, that is my mom, and I spent 25 fucking years under her thumb dealing with bullshit, hypocrisy, double standards, and worst of all, Catholic guilt. So unless you want the next ass chewing and possibly the first foot inside of a rectum at this event to be you, stay in your fucking lane. I will say that shit and I might get asked to leave, but guess what? I made a memory, didn't I? <laughs> Interact with the show on the Twitter Catholic at what guilt. do we call it? <laughs> that is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the What Do We Call It podcast, I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And that's the end.